Welcome to the Board of Education Budget Work Session for January 23rd. And uh, we'd like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to move into closed session? So moved. Second. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305, I move that we go into closed session to consider, consider matters that relate to, the, to negotiations. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to move into closed session. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond when I call your name. Captain Kelly? Aye. Ms. Harper? Aye. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. The motion carries. Okay, we're going into closed session. We'll be back at 5.45. Okay, welcome back to our uh, open session reconvening, and we have a pre budget presentation, please. Uh, Captain Kelly, members of the board, on behalf of Dr. Kane, there are four really components to this evening's uh, work session. The first, Mr. Fister is going to provide uh, part two of our budget presentation. You know that the governor has just released his budget last week, so Mr. Fister has some updated information as it relates to state revenue. The second piece, uh, we went through many documents the last time. Mr. Fister is going to go through and provide you with updated documents. The third piece is based upon the last session. Uh, you had a series of questions, so we've prepared responses to those questions. We'd like to highlight those. And then uh, any discussion uh, that the board members uh, would like to have after that during, then um, we can proceed as, as you wish. Okay, sounds good. That, Mr. Fister. Thank you, Mr. Berluski. Board members, good evening. Um, so th this is a little bit of a continuation. There will be a, a slight little recap, but continuation of uh, what we saw this time last week. Um, and without further ado, I'll start off um, with just a little bit, just kind of a picture of where we are from an expenditure standpoint in the current budget. As you know, these are our 12 or uh, 15 state categories. We don't use them all, but these are the state categories. Um, administration, mid-level, uh, instruction, special ed, and so on and so forth, maintenance, employee benefits, and then our restricted programs, all totaling up $98.7 million, um, which is our current budget, including unrestricted and restricted funds. How this is broken up, as you can see, employee benefits and instruction, you know, just between those two categories, you know, you're looking at 60%. Now, that's not staffing and benefits. That's just what, what's the instructional process and the employee benefits related because most of that instructional course is salaries for our teachers. And then a breakup of administration, just, uh, just over 2%, mid-level administration, about 5 That's your curriculum coordinators and your school-level personnel. Um, transportation, 7%, operations, 6 maintenance at, at 2%, and so on and uh, so forth. By object, this is a kind of a, a stark reality here between salaries and benefits. If you add those two numbers up, you're almost at $84 million out of a $98.7 million budget. Uh, contracts make up about $8 million. As we discussed earlier, about five of that is just for bus contractors. Um, supplies, $2, two million, that's not only school-based supplies, that's our supplies here, that's maintenance supplies. Other charges, things such as um, uh, consultants and um, oh, buses and, and things along those lines. Equipment, 298, 925, and then transfers. And we'll have answers to those transfer questions, I believe, that Ms. Harlow mentioned last week in our question packet that we have to display uh, a little bit later. And again, same little pie chart of those numbers that you just saw. If you take this, you know, the salaries and the benefits, again, we're in that 85, 86% uh, range where it's salaries and benefits. And when we're making significant changes to the budget, if we have to cut significant amounts of money, you can see those other pieces of the pie don't add up to mu too much. So we always, depending on the amount, generally have to look at salaries and employee benefits to make up any big shortfalls that we might have from a funding standpoint. Speaking of funding, uh, we do have, as Mr. Paluski mentioned, we do have some numbers, our first preliminary estimates from the state, and it is a little bit of good news. So as shown on this screen here, uh, foundation is going up by 271000 Our transportation funding um, is $237,000, and then our LEP 
funding is going up $157,000. So in total, nearly a $700,000 increase from state funding based on the preliminary estimates, which was, excuse me, based on Governor Hogan's release uh, last Friday. Um, the foundation represents about a 2.5% increase to that foundation amount. As you know, we get 7000 and some odd dollars per student from the state. That number increased by 2.5%. Transportation, um, they were playing some catch-up, um, so they increased that by 7% because of the cost of transportation. But of note here, I wanted to know, show you that the $157,000 that we got for LEP funding, not only did the base go up by 2.5% because that LEP funding is part of the foundation program as far as the dollar amount is concerned, but we increased 48 students. So that increase in 48 students is what's driving that $157,000 increase in state revenue. And then just some smaller adjustments there as, as shown, the GCEI, the net taxable income, and a small decrease in special education. We increased 48 um, limited English. I'm sorry? ESA, limited English. Yes, lim English. limited English proficiency. Because overall we lost. Steve. Overall, we lost. Yeah, so, so there's a net, as I was talking with Mr. Paluski earlier today, if you net that out, we lost 33.75, but we gained 48. So we lost 70 non-LEP students, gained 48 LEP students, and there's where your net of 33 students that we lost. Okay. So as we saw last week, the required MOE uh, with the county uh, is $1.130 million. The state is now going to give us $694,000. We had decided so far not to use any of our fund balance, so that's a negative $234,000 to our revenue next year. So right now, our additional funds for FY 2020 is right at just about $1.6 million. I put a note at the bottom of the slide here that last year our overall increase was $1.454, and again, right now we're at $1.590, so a little bit more than last year, above last year. As far as the expenditure requests uh, that have come in so far, some of this we talked about last week. Uh, school positions, 18 and a half positions uh, for about a $1.3 million price tag. Uh, materials of instruction, 142000 We talked about the compensation amounts. I'm not going to read through all of these because you, you have this data, but the compensation amounts for employees. The placeholder that we decided to put in there to offset what we think we need, substantial increases in what we pay our substitutes, our home hospital teachers, our para, our temporary paras. Um, again, benefits. Uh, we did some work with the curriculum and instruction team, and there's a request of $143,000 to support their efforts, uh, equal opportunity schools, and athletic officials you saw last week. This, all, this slide I kind of dovetail it as schools, curriculum, students, and staff. Um, as to where these supports are, are going to go. They're going to touch either a school, something with curriculum, it's going to touch a student, or definitely it's going to touch our staff with the compensation. The next slide um, is, again, the piece of paper that you saw last week. It's been updated to include the gateway to technology position. The other change that we made was related to Kennard Elementary School, that there is an overhire situation that we talked about last week, but then an additional request on top of that because of class sizes. So that's why on this particular sheet you see Kennard is asking for two positions. That's, a, that's an addition of one from last week when we made that clarification. Um, the other thing that I know based on the feedback, there, um, when you get the printed copy of this, uh, it will have the date on there. Uh, so, so we know that we have the most current copy. But I also wanted to put down a little key. Uh, I think there was discussion about what if these positions are going to affect class size. And your printed copy will have some class size numbers on it. For uh, presentation purposes, I did not include that. But I did color code the, in the key. So if they are listed in green on the slide presentation, that position does have some effect on class size whether it's in a special, whether it's in one of the core tested subject areas, or whether it's in our elementary grade levels. Those positions do have an effect on class size. Recap, uh, this is the school-based MOI, so this is just pulled right out of the document that we gave you last week, 141,704. There's no changes here for what the schools requested as far as uh, MOI or materials of instruction. Continuing our request, and I label this finance operations and security. So uh, there is a request to reorganize the public information office that has a price tag of about $150,000. Uh, the finance office, $9,900, and I'll get into that in a little bit later, what, exactly <coughs> what that is at the request of the board. 
uh, the transportation that we've discussed, uh, increasing that with the contract and some additional routes, uh, 236,000, and some maintenance contracts and security contracts, about 128,000 between those two lines, and repairs of building of about $100,000. So those are the requests that are coming from the non-school areas. Ms. Harlow. And these go above and beyond this list of positions? Yes. You, you will get a you will get a separate sheet. Why you will didn't get we a separate know this sheet. Let me go through the presentation and then we can go through the sheets that I'll hand out. This is kind of like the overview and then we can get into detail of some of the sheets that I wanted to hand out to you. Okay. You have additional routes? So that is um, transportation. How many more positions? Total of three. You'll see that on the next slide. We talked last we talked time. About that there's, last week. Yeah. There's a chance we may have one chance. to add one additional we route on Ken Island, but we're not, we okay. may not have sure. Okay. And then the after and school. And also the other request was for the two late buses to be okay. reinstated at Ken Island. Right, Island. right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. We can okay. ask you. We're going to go over each individual. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll go through, we'll we'll go through them here. Um, so the next slide is, again, new. So I took the very same format that we had that I presented you last week with the school-based positions in the school-based MOI and kind of made it blue to make it a different color to do non-school-based positions. So here's the public information reorg and the two positions that Mr. Pender had asked for, the electrician and the carpenter slash locksmith. So that's a total of three positions increase, Ms. Harlow. So we're not... All right, I'm sorry. Um, public information is one. Yes. Mr. Pender's two positions is the second and third? Yes, electrician carpenter and, and electrician. his carpenter slash locksmith. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, oh, I had another question, but I forgot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. We'll, we'll, so the public we'll, information, can oh, you tell me about that? Sure, yeah, Because sure. that's different than the one we're missing right now. Uh, Ms. Kurt, if, if I may, yes. we have that a little bit later in okay. the presentation of what that would look like. Okay. okay. Never mind. Yep. I don't mean to stop the show, Thanks. but... Thank you. I'm going to where we need I'll to hold ask my questions, question until so. then, too. Okay. Um, and again, just like the, uh, um, the, we have the non-school-based uh, requests here, which a lot of it is materials, instructions, stipends, some of the transportation money. So this gives you a little bit more detail than what the information I provided you kind of as a summary. We're still maintaining those documents because I think it's a good one-pager to have, but this will give you a little bit of detail as to some of the license agreements. What are they actually paying for? Um, and again, the maintenance requests, the building supplies, the fixed charges that it's related to retirement and health insurance and, and so on. Are these figures um, in the five-year five year plan you gave us that these are actually included in the FY19? You gave us that whole plan of each year what we spent. So these would be additions that we would want on top of FY19 to be included in your FY20 request. Right. And is it in that FY20, that sheet you gave us with the... That only goes up through FY19. So that's your five-year of spend and yep. your current budget. Oh, oh. We haven't produced a document yet because we still have discussions to go as to what we want to oh, include okay. and not include as to what your FY20 request will look like. But these are the requests now that we would like to be included. Okay. And we just have to decide on whether we Position want to fund all requests. of these. Positions and non-positions. Yeah. So we're up to 19.5 new positions included in this current budget as it presents right now. For FY20, yes, ma'am. That is absolutely unbelievable because we couldn't get one last year. We couldn't get one the year before. We got to get more realistic with this request number. Just putting that okay. out there. All right. Um, Mr. Paluski, here's your slide for your public information. <laughs> sure. And I know in uh, in speaking with Dr. Kane, and I know at your request, Captain Kelly wanted to ensure that any any new initiatives. Uh, you wanted her to make sure that she continued to present that. Um, what she's directed us to do is to present that she would like to move forward her reorganization plan um, of the communications office. If you recall, this was also a request that she made last year in reorganizing it. Uh, it does uh, or will require the, uh, the new position, which is a director of uh, community relations and partnerships. Let me backtrack one second. Uh, one of the things, if you recall, last year that, that Dr. Kane came forward with is one of the things that she learned from her listening tour uh, and her focus groups with parents and students, community members, was improving district communication. And I think that's the reason why she originally came forward uh, with a reorganization plan in the communications office. Though that was uh, certainly cut from the budget last year, she wants to bring that forward. 
uh, one of the key components to this, there's really two parts to this position. Uh, one is overseeing all functions of communication. This individual would report directly to the superintendent, uh, would serve on the superintendent's executive uh, team, um, and would supervise two key personnel members. One would be the communication specialist, and the other one would be the multi uh, media um, specialist as well. Currently there are two individuals. There's a communication specialist which we have currently vacant um, and um, uh, currently PIO um, video. It, those are two current positions so this would be a reorganization of that. Um, another key component outside of the function of communication um, is really around partnerships. Currently we don't have anyone in the school system that is really organizing partnerships uh, for the district in and of itself. One big key change to this person's uh, position would be the creation potentially of an education foundation and leading that. Uh, many organizations, many school systems have educational foundations uh, in which they can uh, you know, get uh, donations as an example and that can help supplement uh, strategic initiatives that can't be funded by the operating budget. The last piece of this uh, is what the superintendent believes is an untapped resources, uh, an untapped resource, uh, which is our volunteers. Uh, although we, volunteers currently are in uh, Mr. Farley's shop, we don't have anyone that really organizes volunteers. So we believe there's there's folks out there, our retired teachers that want to come back and help. Um, that is a great way to supplement some things that we can't do, you know, we can't get another position, but how can we tap our volunteers? The research out there is very clear. You have to have somebody that highly coordinates this, highly coordinates their skills with the area of need. What you also have uh, in your packet that the superintendent wanted to provide is an organization chart, and you also have three job descriptions uh, for each one of those reorged positions, including the new position, which would be the director of um, community relations and partnerships. Thank you. Sir. Any questions on that while we're still here? Okay. Moving forward. Um, to address one of the concerns of the board members, we also wanted to include things that related to the legislative audit that we just finished and what uh, of those priorities would require some type of funding. As I mentioned, the finance office was asking for $9,900. That's to directly uh, address the one OLA finding of not having someone or the resources to go out and audit the school books. As we've discussed, there's a lot of money that passed through all of the schools, and we do a sort of a check and balance kind of uh, thing, but not a true full audit we don't have the we don't have the staff so this would be to look that maybe we perhaps we could include this in our contract with our external auditors to perform this function other school systems uh, uh, larger school systems have an internal audit function some of the smaller school systems do it this way by contracting out with their existing audit firm I've had conversations with the audit firm it would be something they would be interested in um, but there would be a funding component and this is again just a placeholder until we actually went out and and actually got money to do that or, or ideas of what this would actually cost and a lot of that's going to be based on how often we want to go out and audit the books obviously we probably wouldn't do all 14 schools every year we might do all the high, the high both high schools every year and then vacillate between middle schools and elementary schools um, so that maybe on a three-year cycle we've hit every school at least once in a three-year cycle so part of this audit um, I remember from the uh, legislative audit the problem that was school books it was the internal operations in other words what what the principal handles and what the staff handles those kind of books does it also include athletics because I, I don't think there's any control over athletic budgets and the, the athletic budgets are controlled through the same same financial thing. secretary it would be part of this as part well part of the audit okay. the gate receipts and things like that yes this that would be included here as well okay yep um, one of the other fi findings uh, that we initially had said that would have a dollar amount was some of our technology our upgrades to equipment our security protocols and our database security we're not estimating at this point that that to satisfy the requirements of the legislative audit that we would need to f have any operating funds related to this um, Mr. Combs has some of the has already completed some of the things and some of them didn't have a dollar amount those that do have a dollar amount he's made resources available in the five-year technology plan that's funded from the capital budget such as you know some of the servers some of the infrastructure the um, some of the active migration that we're going through now all of those things should address 
those components in the OLA audit from a technology standpoint. So there would be no dollars necessary out of the operating budget to support that. And then one of the other things was the health insurance claims audit. As you know, we're part of ESMAC, the Eastern Shore Mineral Educational Consortium, where we purchase health insurance or an alliance uh, with a lot of with our county government and other uh, counties on the shore and um, would be to do a claims audit. Now, what a claims audit is, if, if you recall, we, we've done a dependent, a dependent audit where making sure this person is a legitimate dependent of yours to be included on our health insurance. And we've done that, and some of the new software and providers that we have ensure that all of that documentation has to be provided, marriage certificate, birth certificates, divorce decrees, all of that stuff, before we will put you on our roles as a dependent. That's been taken care of. What the claims audit is, is we have a contract through ESMAC with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and says XYZ procedure is $100. And we would need a claims audit to go in and make sure that we're not being charged 110 or 120 for that contracted procedure. Um, we would need all ESMAC members to agree to this. So we, this is just new, and we would bring this up at probably some future alliance meeting. But if there was a cost and all of the entities decided to do this, most of the counties have a little bit of a reserve sitting over there in ESMEC to help stabilize rates. There would probably be no impact. I'm not anticipating any operating budget impact if we were to do this claims audit. I did talk to the consultant uh, recently, and the last time a claims audit was done, I want to say umpteen years ago, but quite a few years ago, and um, there was no, um, no findings. So that we were with the contracts we have in place, the consultants that we have in place, they do a pretty good job um, of monitoring our expenditures. So there were no findings when they did do this a couple years ago, and I believe ESMEC didn't want to undertake that as an ongoing expenditure, but it's something that we'll bring up to the alliance and revisit. Please know that we also implemented coordination of benefits this year very thoroughly to ensure that when a dependent has another benefit available to them, that they're taking advantage of it in order to defray our costs. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Moving on, um, budget survey. I have some preliminary results. If you saw, um, based on the deadline that we initially established on January 21st, um, we had limited response. We were right around 172 responses. So I asked Mr. Paluski if we could extend this to try to elicit some additional responses. Uh, we put out an additional uh, social media post, uh, updated the website, changed the deadline, sent out another uh, message to our um, employees. And then we also asked schools that if they have any school communication going out this week to please include that. And miraculously overnight, we had 110 additional uh, respondents. So I think it was well worth the extension. Um, We'll have next week's budget work session, we have, we'll have, uh, I'll have a little bit more detail as to what the survey uh, was showing. Um, but here's some pretty good uh, points to pick off of it. Uh, so far, 53% of the people that responded were parents, 41 were staff, 6% were external stakeholders. They rated our quality of instruction, 75% rated us a four or better on a five point scale. 78% feel their children are safe in our schools. Um, their priorities, of course, compensation uh, from the staff, class size, student safety, and aging facilities. Everyone had the opportunity to say, what is the greatest concern? I'm hoping you all have gone through and done your survey. Uh, therefore, you know your last question, what is the greatest concern? And 50% of the respondents said adequate co county funding was the greatest concern for this county and the school system going forward. Gee, they're finally getting it. <laughs> so I just wanted to share those responses, but I'll have more detail when we close this on Monday for next Wednesday's uh, session. And then um, winding down here a little bit on the presentation on the capital fund. Um, and I know this is going to be difficult to read, um, but we have <laughs> some major construction going on, which would be the renovation. Or Mr. Penner, do you want to take over or you want me to keep <clears throat> going? Sure. Um, one thing that the county commissioners asked us a few, a few years ago was to keep consistent kind of numbers going across the years so we didn't come in and ask for, you know, 20 million one year, then 2 million the next year. So what we did was our facility assessment several years ago, which gave us those hard numbers. Um, and our buildings are getting older um, and, you know, we have to supplement that, uh, the money in there to, to fix them. 
and a lot of those items are big ticket items. So we meet earlier in the year with the county administrator and also um, the county finance, finance officer to review um, what our requests are. And when you look at this, it, it's hard to put on one sheet because it's so many different areas, but we tried to organize it as best we could. Um, <clears throat> so, hang on here one second, please. So going through, you know, basically we look at our CIP and we need to have feasibility studies um, for the central office here. I mean, this place is, you know, in dire need. Um, our next building that was built in 1976-77 uh, is Centerville Middle School. Um, that is one of the last ones we need to truly do a renovation on. Um, so we need to look at a feasibility study. Is it cost uh, effective to build it, Centerville Middle School right next to it in an empty field and tear down the old one? Or is it cost effective to just renovate what we have there? Um, so we need to take a look at that. The other ones that we have been approved, the systemics, um, those are ones where we get state funding and we also get county funding. And they have been approved. That's the roof replacement um, on Bayside Elementary School, uh, partial roof replacement, um, Ken Island Elementary School, and then the fire alarm replacement at um, Churchill Elementary School. Um, the next section is the facility assessment. We're pretty confident around 1.4 million to 1.6 million each year is what we kind of need to do upgrades to paint the buildings. This will be the first summer where we're going to get to paint probably three elementary schools that have not been painted in probably over 12, 13 years. We're, we're, our goal is to put all these items on a cycle to have them painted so many years. If, if you recall, aging school funds the state gave us used to supplant or supplement that they no longer qualify for paint you can't they won't let you use it so that has to come from the county all of these items you see here if you go to um, we've never really paid attention to our asphalt you know Queen Anne's County High School parking lot is a prime example I can name Ken Island High School those are items that came out we got hard numbers um, to do those so it's broken down into categories, and I wanted to show you a little bit, when you look at it, it's from all over the counties, not just one particular school. It's spread out um, with that. So that is the facility assessment part. And then if you go to the next page, okay, these are items that <clears throat> do not fall within the facility assessment, but are still generally funded by the county commissioners, and I'll say they've been generous when it comes to the capital side of it to us. Um, we look at, um, we have MView, which is going to be coming online, we, it, we've, um, which the police will be able to view our cameras if an incident happens um, within the school system. We're finalizing the installation of the interior cameras at the elementary schools. Um, so if you look at that, we kind of put in there um, security cameras, single point entry, Carla today, if you recall, we have, um, Carla went around, looked at Bayside Elementary, Queen Anne's County High School, the ones where you walk in and you can just go left, right, straight, anywhere you want. Um, came up with some really good strategies today. Furniture in there, you see at $100,000, it's under safety security, and it's kind of really under safety. We do not have a line item for furniture. And what we've done for years is everything that's left over from Stevensville, we would haul back to the warehouse and whoever needed furniture would come and get it. Same thing with the old Sellersville Middle School. That, those items are depleted and we truly have nothing in there. So when I say nothing, we have about four classrooms of desk and chairs. And that's, that's, that's it. So. If a principal calls me up, I just had this the other day, hey, I'm short four chairs, four desks, well, I, got, I got some, they're not the best and they're not gonna match what you got in there, but you know, we gotta go through with that. The other thing we're seeing is we're having cafeteria tables that are 25, 30 years old um, that have met their life cycle. We're gonna try to refurbish some of them. Some of them are just, you know, we just had that at Churchill Elementary School. Um, so those items are there. Um, 
Vehicle replacement, just real quickly. One of the items, again, with the county commissioners, we needed eight buses to be replaced this year. We, if we average about four, and I'm talking county-owned buses, we said, hey, can we get four last year, get four this year? That's the number you see there for special needs buses. Um, maintenance vehicles, we really need to get on a, uh, a cycle again. I think I might have told you. The one, one of the ones we want to replace is a 1999 or 1998 van that one of my maintenance guys still drives. The other trucks are about 2002, 2004. Um, but we still have some other vehicles that are uh, 1989. So we're trying to replace those. Um, the next item you see is technology. That um, falls within Mr. Combs' plan, you know, with the one-to-one -one initiative and the replacement of technology when the LCD projector goes down, the smart board, those kinds of things. There is no line item for those. Um, now, miscellaneous. But, this was, but those were actually presented um, last year. I mean, we know. Yes. The yes. Whole, I forget how many years out he's. Uh, five, well, so. five in the five-year technology plan. That is just a. Right. As Mr. Pender said, projectors. You'll see, this is just for this year, but right. all my little side sheets have everything that I'm showing you right now. Sure, but I mean, this this would not come as a surprise no, no. to the commissioners. No. We already discussed it. Okay, one more question and before you met on the safety and security. As I recall, there are grants, lots of grants coming from the, the safety center, right? Are we able to tap? Have we been able to we, tap into yes. any of them? Yes, we tapped into the one, um, the there's two. two. One is what I call hard material, as in cameras, facility upgrades. Mm -hmm. The other one is, is in training. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate because we do a pretty good job training. That grant is larger than the grant that we had for the security. Mm -hmm. But there is more money coming forward, supposedly. Um, but I will say uh, there's not a, not a clear direction. When I say clear direction, not within our school system, there's not a clear direction from the state really on here's where it has to go, here's what you have to do. It's kind of finding your way as you you. Because that was on. part of Governor Hogan's layout of his yeah, we've, legislation. His legislation. We've used yeah. two funds already, and then also okay. um, the aging school funds we've used. So right. we've gone from having basically 40 cameras to almost 600 cameras. Okay. Um, you know, access controls. We were able to use MABE grants to do the uh, visitor management system. So um, there is money coming. Some of those items we may be able to take off, or it may be a matching grant where you have to match the funds that they give you. Okay. Um, and then the last part, uh, board members, is just items that have come up. You know, the textbooks, uh, Mr. Paluski, if you want to speak to that or is that? Uh, sure. Uh, traditionally, we've received in our budget uh, $500,000 for textbooks. Uh, we've done a cost analysis over the next six years, and we estimate it's $850,000 each year. We put that in the budget last year. It was denied. We only got 500, so we just put 600. Uh, we have many needs. I think I'd mentioned that before. We have some areas that are using <coughs> textbooks that are 15 to 20 years old. Uh, we're still migrating that as we have um, resources available. And just for those um, Queen Anne's County High School, their uh, walk-in refrigerator freezer was installed in 1966. Um, a lot of items in that building are original items um, wow. that they did. That is a miss. If you're looking at Bayside, that's, that's I'm, no. I'm not correct. Yeah. So where would that other refrigeration have been? Uh, Bay, no, oh. that is the correct school. It's not six but it's the wrong date. date. Sorry. Wrong date. Yeah, sorry. 1990. Yeah. Cut and paste. Sorry. But um, the other areas that we've identified, playgrounds, they have a life expectancy, and some of those um, we're meeting. And let me tell you, to be ADA compliant um, and those types of things, it's, it's not a cheap situation. But with that number there, it has Church Hill listed. That would actually be Church Hill and Sellersville Elementary School on there. I see um, you have on here, and I, I'm only bringing this up because of what transpired with the county commissioners. Um, Ken Allen High School and Queen Anne's County High School track resurfacing. 
if they go forward with their turf fields, and I know this is a con controversial subject, but if they go forward with that, shouldn't that fall under Parks and Rec, the track surfacing? They, Wouldn't that be a part could. of it? Yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm just asking yeah. then if, that, if they would absorb that in that budget rather than having it reflected here. And they, they, they may absorb it in this budget. They may absorb it in the next budget. Okay. I just. It's just wanted, something to bring up. I wanted to have that as a placeholder in case it. Oh, understand. Occur. Absolutely. Thank um, you. I'll tell you this, our PA systems and our phone systems, it, it's amazing how uh, <coughs> we're we have to find parts on eBay and things like that. It's just that life cycle has, has come up and we're trying to keep these buildings for 30 or 40 years and it's just that time. So we have a phone system replacement schedule, we have a fire alarm replacement schedule, and all those numbers are fairly consistent across. Well, pardon me, Mad Peak Elementary School was open in 2003, so you're saying it only had a 15 year life? Kellena High School came into operations in 2000. You just replaced this that one, right? The so I'm, I'm just Island. throwing those numbers out. Last year, Kellena yeah, High School, and I think. No, Kellena Island coverage. High School should be uh, just the intercom system, the okay. PA system. Yeah. The, um, the PA intercom, the phone system was replaced at um, Ken Island High School. And Graysonville is here, I think, this year. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I have a question. I don't know if this is the place to answer it or not. Solar technology at Queen Anne's County High School and Centerville. We should see a significant change in what we think we have to budget for utilities because we are getting that advantage now. Yes, we should. Is that reflected in this number? Not at this moment. Um, this is capital. I, I don't mean on the capital. I'm, I mean in the budget. Anywhere General. have we reduced our utility um, projection for this budget cycle based on what we expect to get in savings from our solar so, panels? Yeah. So the two schools that are fed by that actually is three. Uh, Centerville Middle School, Queen Anne's County High School, and then we were also able to um, reduce at Ken Island High School. Um, right. Really? Right. Yeah. Right. So, so we should see... Our electricity budget for the current year is already reduced by $150,000 from our prior year, our historical. If you look at your five-year average sheet, and we were averaging $1.7 million, our, our budget for this year is one6 we get a little bit more information, we might be able to curtail that a little bit further, but we've already made a reduction in the current year budget anticipating that coming online. Are we sure? Because my understanding was last year we didn't have a full year that we could do that. This year should reflect a full year of savings from solar, electric to solar, and it was going to cover the cost for those three schools. I mean, we don't feed solar down to Kent Island, but what we're able to save and sell back, we, we can so support their we're electric. Net, oh, our me, net metering right. off of. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. regardless, so we were supposed to have a year reflected in this new budget yeah. this year. You're not going to have a full year reflected in there because. That's my question. All of this was based upon the substation, the mm -hmm. electric substation Delmarva Power is building on Hope Road by Southern States. Mm -hmm. It just finally came online. So you will see about two months extra from Centerville Middle School because we were able to feed directly into there. And we also have a battery storage system there that we put in. But about a month ago, month and a half ago, we were finally able to tap into the full system of what we got. So when did we start um, supplying solar power to Ken Island High, Queen Anne's County High School? About a month and a half ago. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, so it really did ready. not go we up and running until yeah. we were ready. the end of our... Yeah. We were ready. Okay. We were, it just was all dependent. We'll have to okay. realize it for okay. next year then. Yep. Okay, very good. But Ms. Harlow, we'll take a look at that and see if we can Partially. curtail Least, some expenditures yeah. in the 20 budget. Okay, um, I have other questions, but I'm not gonna hog everybody's time. I'm sure everybody has questions. Well, we wanna finish the, are you oh, done with capital? We're and done, yeah. sorry. Oh, no, they, okay. sorry. Any other questions on capital? 
that's fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, then, real quick, we'll just a quick little summary here of what we've done over these last two meetings. We've we've given you some information on county revenue, their allocation and expenditures for 18 and 19. We looked at the Board of Education's revenue and expenditures for 18 and 19. We had a nice little discussion about maintenance of effort. Um, we looked at some budget requests and talked about some of those inflationary items, such as retirement and health insurance. Uh, we brief little you know, uh, update on the budget survey, and then we went and talked a little bit about capital. So where do we go from here? Um, we're still, of course, in the budget development process. We have some additional information gathering, I'm sure. Uh, we have to come up with some final decisions. Uh, Dr. Kane is scheduled to give her presentation to this board on February the 6th. And after that would be your approval of the operating and capital budget as it would get transmitted to the county commissioners. So that's where we are. Um, I can open it up for questions and answers, um, but I'd also like to hand out a few documents. Mr. Farley, if you can just pass them down that side. And the, the sixth, we're not, Is it a package we're not necessarily voting on, yes, on it's the a sixth, package. right? It's just yeah. being presented. Just, just being presented. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, got it. Mr. Paluski, okay. if you would mind, yes. take a packet and pass down. Thanks. So before we get into the question and answer again, this well, is... Um, I was wondering if you could okay. go back to a slide Absolutely. before we jump out of here. Yes. Um, actually, this is it. This is it. That's yeah, what these, I wanted to do. Uh, yeah. I think so um, I have a question because as of last time, we were only adding 16 and a half positions. Correct. And now we're adding 18 and a half. Correct. I see an extra teacher at Kennard that wasn't on the list last week. Correct. Okay, what was the other addition? The Sutlersville Middle School Technology Teacher, the Gateway to Technology. I was going to ask where that was going to get added because yes, I got that my was notes added. that we're supposed to add That got more. it up to 17 and a half, okay. and then when I was okay. going through position control, and I'm going, wait a second, we have an overhire okay. and we need to increase. That's where the, I apologize for that oversight and from last so week. And so now, we're, well, it's not an oversight. You you said you would add it for this mm -hmm. This week. Yep. yep. Um, so Let we're me looking just, at if 21 I can. So that's what new your positions. updated sheet is here. It's updated from last week and gives you a little explanations. Um, the pink color that I added tells you that those are kind of the must haves to correct the overhire so we keep our class sizes. And I added, based on the request of the board, a class size column to this request. If you look at that, there's three numbers in that column. It is what their current class size is by that grade. So if I can focus your attention on this sheet, Centerville Elementary School, very first one, they have seven grade one teachers. They're asking for one. Their total staffing for next year would be eight if approved. How that equates to class size, they currently have a 20 to one. If you grant them the position, they will stay at 20 to one. If you do not grant them the position, the class size would go up to 23. That was one of your questions, Kat. So yes. can you tell me that again? Perfect. 23 is what they would go up to if we didn't get the position. 20 would be if you approve their position, and 20 is where they currently are. So to s maintain their 20 to 1 class size, they would need that position. Okay, so. Because of the number of students coming in? Because of okay. the number of students, yeah, okay. as, they, okay. as they matriculate through grades. And they're all that way. The first yep. one is how yep. many uh, there's, there would be in a classroom if we approved the position. Yep. The second category is where they're currently sitting in number of students in a classroom. And the third category in the row is if we made no change. Actual, yes. Okay. Now the other, first now, one is where they sit. First one is currently said, where they are. Where okay. they, that's what she said. And then where the, they okay, are. I'm sorry, yes. middle column. Second. Now the only one that's a little bit different, I oh, had to present I did, it. I did, I did, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. With an addition to the position. First one is where they currently are right now with their current staffing and their current they, students. If they, the if they get the position, okay. So if you look at the column heading, it got current requested actual. So currently they're at 20 to one. With the requested position, they'll stay at 20 to one, but they'll actually be at 23 if you don't give them anything. The one that's the anomaly is the canard, and I didn't know how to really display it, so let me explain it to you. They're currently at 21. If you give them their two positions, they'll stay at 21. If you only do the overhire, they'll go to 24, and if you don't give them either the overhire or the new position, they'll be at 28. And a lot of that is because of the fourth phase of Northbrook, where they expect that their tuition's gonna increase. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hey, give me a Quick reminder what that overhire issue is. So, I'm so the over, that, that was, go, Mr. Pluski, or? Yeah, if, if you remember, uh, at, as school was getting ready to start, we were recognizing that uh, Kennard had a, a really increase in grade five. Mm -hmm. And so those funds were taken out of fund balance 
to be able to pay for a teacher to reduce class size. So on his position control, since we took that out of fund balance, it was not budgeted. Now we're putting it in that it needs to be budgeted. Plus, there's the additional increase in enrollment, which is the addition to the staffing. So what happens when we, bu we budget for it, we get it, then that money doesn't actually go back to fund balance, right? No, no. One, fund balance is one-time use only. Right. So for us to maintain <coughs> this, that's why it's an increase, that's why it's a request. Let's say if we did nothing else but those three positions, which are listed on that other sheet, we'll go over as mandatory. We need those three positions that are basically not funded, that we're currently funding now, just to stay equal. I have a, a generalized question because I'm a bottom line, bottom line kind of person. Yes. So all of this that you have out, have here, is that this number? Everything's reflected in this number that you have this year. A, the, oh, this is just this that's year. that's just a snapshot of 19. You don't really have anything categorically or anything based so on where you, 20 is. So what? You, okay. So you haven't added this to this. Not yet. This is going to be your cheat sheet, and when we get to it. I guess the question that would come up is if we have okay, done now okay I see. with oh, Thank I'm you. sorry. If no. we've done okay with the fund balance paying for that position, how are we gonna say we still need a position? I mean Because fund balance is only is not a, it's unlike state aid yeah. that if we have a hundred dollars this year, we're gonna have a hundred dollars next year. With fund balance, we had two hundred and thirty four thousand dollars this year. We don't have that $234,000 coming from anywhere else unless you want to take money from fund balance again. It is only a one-time okay. use of funds. Okay. And we don't know where our fund balance is now? For yeah, we, um, I can get you information. We can, we can certainly talk about that. Um, and that would be one of the discussions as we move right. forward in the as budget, how forward. much, if any, we want to include a fund balance to fund ourselves okay. for this budget. Okay, and, and just to be clear, Mr. Fister, yes. not a good financial practice right. because it's one-time money. Correct. When we're adding things to. Yeah. The, so we have an operating cost. We, we would like to maintain an adequate fund balance. Um, it's there for um, one-time purchases, you know, if we ever need it or we get into a, a bad winter where we have some additional overtime or equipment failures or things like that. Um, we certainly don't want to rely on fund balance uh, as a continuing revenue source and the worst possible thing would be to rely on fund balance as a continuing revenue source paying for things that have a continuing life such as a position Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, and I don't know if you can help me with this last year we asked for f eight new positions or six do you know eight and the, the year before, four and It a started half. out at 35, if I can recall, and well, that was down the to principal eight. request. Yes, 33, I think. Um, and to, uh, the year before, we asked for 4.5 year budget. Okay. Thanks. So, just finishing up the green sheet. Um, again, that's a, just an updated form for last year. I mean, I'm from, that you saw from last week. I'm sorry. And then on the non instructional side is the blue sheet kind of same format. There's the positions, a little bit more description to what's in the presentation, um, and then some of the things and the justifications for some of the MOI and the stipends <coughs> in the curriculum instruction area, um, transportation, maintenance, fixed charges, so on and so forth. All of this culminates back to what I call your one-page handy cheat sheet, and I'll go through that real quickly, and then we'll be open the floor for questions and answers. So at the top, as you can see, same as last week it's the approved budget you'll notice I added state revenue of six hundred ninety four thousand dollars we kept the county at MOE one one three oh oh thirty five fund balance of a negative two thirty four because we're not at this point asking to use any fund balance so to fund all of the things that are down below we would be at the current moment asking the county to fund us above maintenance of effort at four point one million dollars for a total county request of five two six eight two two four which equates to a 5.81% budget increase in that blue area that says for discussion purposes. The zero to the right of that tells us that we're balanced, tells that the revenue we're asking up for the top is paying for everything down below. This, this is kind of your over, this is kind of the summary of your presentations, your blue and your green sheets, all on one nice page, the money we're getting 
and how we'd like to spend it. What's well, the federal allocation to us? It's not. There's nothing on this line. I, we don't I'm sorry. Any, I don't see anything for. So it, it's 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 not an allocation. It's a change over last year. We're not anticipating because, basically, 100 percent. Excuse me. Of our funding from the federal is number. on the restricted side. So okay. this is an increase over the current year. I was just asking how much it was last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Seven hundred thousand. Yeah, it wasn't much. Like five, a little over five million, I think. Let me get you. Let me get you that number. I don't. Oh, there it is. Um, Four point eight million dollars. Four point. Four eight five five seven eighty eight is what the approved federal funding was restricted, and it's all restricted. There is no federal in the operating budget. Four eight five five seven eight five. Seven eight eight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let me clarify. But it's not operating. This big picture. It is operating, but it's restricted. Okay. This yes, ma'am. Big picture piece here. Yes. Um, this was one we can live and die by, but it's five ends up five point seven million over MOE is what you said. No, four point one. Oh, 4. where 1. is that? I mean, that's where. The the line that says county above MOE four one three eight one eighty nine. Okay. And the 5268224 to the side of that is the culmination of the maintenance effort <coughs> and the amount above maintenance of effort. So our county request, if you were to go forward with this budget presentation and funding all these positions and all this other stuff, we would be asking the county for $5.268 million. Right, but, no, but above MOE, we'd only be asking for point four. Four. Yeah, they have to give us the 1130. Right. That's yes. That's the yes. education effort. Yes. Not MOE. Yes. Okay. Yep. And the other question I have, though, is this is what we, when we discussed with the county about making us whole, this would make us whole. Well, we have to have that discussion a little bit further because that would make us whole with all that we're requesting. Okay. So the way we've broken out this sheet is, of course, our mandatory costs. Right. And we can debate over what's mandatory and what's cost of doing business, but your mandatory costs are 1.5. So just to do that first block, we would need basically $1.5 million. We've got that. We've got the 700000 from the state and 1.1. We've got 1.8. But you notice compensation is below that mandatory cost line other than the carryover. Right. So that's when you get into making us whole. If you want to make us whole and settle potential negotiated agreements, then you're going to have to get down into the cost of doing business area. Wait, is that where the compensation is? <coughs> you're calling that cost of doing business this blue? Yes, because okay. okay. we're not settled yet. We don't have settled agreements. Okay. So if we were settled, that would become a mandatory cost because you know, the board has Correct. agreed to settle that particular agreement. Okay. So right now, since we're in negotiations, cost of doing business. Okay, gotcha. So when you factor that in, you see 3.8. So if you just add the first two blocks, 1.4 and 3.8, you're up at 5.3 because you can see the other two areas, program continuations is only 35000 and additional considerations is only 407000 so a lot of our work is going to be in the upper section here. So there is there's one more piece of additional information, if you would like that now, and that is responses to your questions from the last budget meeting. Yes. If, if you would like that now. Oh, let's go there before we start a whole new round of questions. That's a good <laughs> idea. That's a very good idea. You should have those. We'll do these questions and then we'll take a quick break. Okay, yep. sounds good. Okay. We can just we okay. can just hit the highlights of the kind of a thirty thousand foot view and not you know okay. we can go into more detail as you want. Well, detail. Remind us of questions written down. <laughs> Everybody's got and please, it. if we forgot one that you remember that you asked and it's not included here, we'll certainly yep. add that and and make this a a working document. Um, so you want me to take the first two, Mr. Fisher? Yeah, if you want, and then you they're can, yours. And then yep, yep. So the, the first question, I think you would ask it, um, Captain Kelly, and that was uh, about the teacher academy program. So in that paragraph, you have, uh, we currently offer that at both of our high schools. Uh, it's a four course pathway. You have the courses there and you also have enrollment um, for those programs. 
The second question that was asked uh, was about our concurrent enrollment students that their home school is Kent Island, but they, they come to Queen Anne's County Public Schools uh, more likely to take a CTE pathway program that's only offered there, like welding would be an example. So what you have here is trend data. You have four years. Uh, it's consistent around in the mid-30s about how many students from Kent Island come to Queen Anne's County High School um, each year. Um, one thing to note about it is that uh, when students do that, they spend just about 75% of their time at Queen Anne's County High School. So, and there's an explanation there, but let me just show you, if you look at table one, how to read this document. So you've got the number of classes that are taken, you've got the number of students. So you'll see the total number of students there is 35. And then I highlighted six on each one of these because we're on a four period day. So four period first semester, four period second semester. So out of the four choices that they have, three of those would be taken at Queens County High School. First semester, there's your first three. Second semester is the second three. So that shows you that 20 students out of 35 are taking three classes in the semester, first semester and three classes in the second. So, and there's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, like if you have welding for an example and it's a two period block, it's a second period and a third period, little Greg might need social studies that's not offered first period at Queen Anne's. I mean, at Ken Island, it is at, you know, um, Queen Anne's, I I'm able to take it. So what you see is anywhere from one course uh, up to beyond the 9 and 10 and I think that's also worth uh, noting because you're thinking okay if there's four periods in and there's four periods in the spring and there's four periods how in the world can you get a 9 and how in the world can you get a 10. So we have some cases where students are uh, taking independent study where that would be an additional course. We also have what we call skinny courses meaning they're 45 minutes so that's where you can see taking an additional class and that's how you get beyond the eight. So just so, so you have the trend for the last four years. Where does that 45 minute class fall into their school day? Chorus, band, lunchtime. Yeah, but, right, um, right at lunchtime. Uh, okay, that, they, that they was my question. They flip it on either side. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. So I'm they're sorry. not left with at the that, end of that, the day. That, that, that's I apologize. Exactly. No, I appreciate that. that but I was thinking, I how can we kid, make sure they're not left at the end of the day how? with only having 45 minutes and needing a full one and a half hour class? How? That and, explains and, it. And, no, and thank as, you. As Captain yeah, Kelly just said, yes. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and, and our schools yeah. do oh, a phenomenal that. job oh, of trying to take, you know, little Mr. Pender's interest and his graduation requirements and, hey, you can take that here first period and then the rest of your days at Ken Allen and the rest of your days at Queen Anne's. And you have to get bus time in there. So <laughs> you're right, could be bus, annex, could be you know, the ninth grade annex. annex. Yeah. So it's, it's a very complex yeah. in order to offer an interest right. in a pathway. Right. And if a child has an IEP, then we've got to, uh, we, we've got to be able to accommodate <coughs> that. So um, that's all also in supporting you know, the school's staffing because you know, little Mr. Pender is now in a social studies class. Well, those numbers now add to the current population at the school. And I'm sure that probably makes sense. You're only reflecting 30 students. That was going to be my question. So who gets the credit for their enrollment? Their home school or the school they spend the majority of their time at? Where they're, where they're taking that course. Okay, so if they come up from Ken Island for 75% of their day, they're actually counted as an enrollee at Queen Anne's County High School. Uh, let, let, me, let me take that back. So when we begin to do our staffing in the spring, they count that down there as not counted at Queen Anne's. Let me, let me just clarify that. Right, they count it so, as a student down there. Right. But up here it has to come into play right. for the right. class. So schedules. when we work on our staffing all the way up until the beginning of school, all those pieces are being, you know, factored in. So if I in. said what is the actual enrollment at Ken Island High School right now, yeah, it would include the kids sure. that go up Because that's their home CTE. school. Exactly. That's, that's their home point. school. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. It would be the same as looking at the dual enrollment. They're vice spending vice part of their right. right. Wherever right. your home but school is, is where they're, school. Gotcha. where they're counted. Yeah, counted yeah, in their enrollment. counselors and all are at Ken Island. Sure. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. They have their day up there. I mean, yeah. have to go back there. Yeah. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Fister, and, and really the next segment will include your five-year cost comparison chart. Yes. So if you yes. want to dig that out, 
He's going to show you how to how to analyze, navigate that, navigate Doc, it. Very, Doc, very good. Which one are we at? So you're going to need the that we're going to need the five year comparison chart. Everybody have theirs. I brought an extra yep. one or two. If and then he'll be on table two in the in the questions piece. So if you look on page five of the question packet, and then you have to so put that in your right hand if you're right-handed or left-handed don't matter, and your cost comparison on the other. So page five administration that's your category that's on page one of 13 they're pretty much in numerical order 8,005 other outgoing transfers I think Ms. Harlow brought this up last week the $10,000 ongoing and ongoing this is the annual membership payment to be part of ESMEC gotcha because it, it's a it's an accounting thing we're transferring it because we're the fiscal agent for that so it's a transfer it's really not an expense Wait, what so again the on your five-year cost yeah. you have okay. the very bottom line is $10,000 as far as what transfers transfer. are which, on page one of on page one oh, oh, thank at the you very so bottom thank which you. is right. box no, one five. on yeah. page five we, of the could questions we, like um kind of signify that better than just the word transfer by state law no oh <laughs> <laughs> just like i can't because call it I'm anything you, other than salaries and wages for me last year and that's it wasn't a hot, until that's after. a hot topic yeah. even for the yes yeah. yes that's my like, thinking i but at least now we know the yep. answer so i mean i didn't get the quite the question didn't come to my head until after the budget cycle last okay. year because i continued to ponder over these numbers and and, and again it's an accounting thing it, it can be it. applied I in multiple it. ways it, it is an expense, but it's not. It's more of a transfer because gotcha. we're the fiscal agent for, for ESMEC. Gotcha. Um, the second one, instruction, if you go to page 3 of 13 on your five-year com cost comparison, and again, well, I'm sorry, page 5, five, five, five sorry, of the five-year. Yep, the 8,002 sure. to other Maryland LEAs, it matches the second block on page 5 of your questions. Okay. Uh, 26, 3,054 is what we spent last year. This is payments for our students that might be um, you know, with Department of Juvenile Services, Health Services, other educational providers. Um, I know there's a few in Delaware. And then out-of-county tuition payments to other LEAs such that if for some reason Johnny has to live with Grandma in Talbot County, but his real place of residence is here, Talbot <coughs> County is going to educate that child, and we would pay Talbot County to educate that child, just vice versa if we had a child that was Resi residing whose home residence was in another county but for some other reason needed to be educated here we would get compensated for that well, and any and that, difference between the per pupil the state makes up and that says Maryland LEA yep so you know that gives us a reference point couldn't we say on the one on page one um, Eastern Shore Consortium or whatever just beside the outgoing transfer sure so it's not just Hey, what did you do with that ten thousand dollars? Yeah. Question. Okay. Hey, what are you doing with that fifty thousand dollars? Well, yep. trust me, <laughs> that's come across too. Oh, I, yep. yes, we Mr. could do that. Mr. Pot. We could do that. Okay, very good. Um, flipping to page. Seven. I, I'm sorry, real quick, just. Uh huh. Um, we don't get to bid that out. We wherever they are, that's where they end up. I mean, I, I've had that question before. You can't like get a discount for you know. I mean, they just, that's the services. For the that's membership. That's the services. I mean, I, I've had people ask me this question, law. and I'm like, no, that's, you it's, know. It's actually by law. McKinney Bento says that we have to transport them. Yeah. And wherever they go, oh. that's their cost. But you're thinking like a Kennedy Krieger or something like that. Right. That's wherever we, the services have to be provided for that child, that's where we send that child at. That's their line. I the believe there's some state controls on the costs. Actually, you'll see that in Okay, well, that's what I was getting to. Yeah. But it has um, to they only have certain leads. escalators and things like that. Okay. Okay. But um, which of course, I don't okay. I don't have I the cost way, per, you know, where, uh, service or anything. Is this but. for um, homeless folks too, or is it? There's like a homeless folk and they want. Yeah, that's that's McKinney Ventil. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, and again, on page seven, transfers to Maryland LEA, LEAs that kind of takes care of the other two. And again, the one of them is our Queen Anne's County share of the MOU to be part of the Midshore Special Ed Consortium. And then back to transfers to other Maryland LEAs is our non-public placement educational costs. There's your Kennedy Krieger and your couple other. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, School thank you. I wasn't so concerned about those as I was just, yep. uh, it, for some reason I thought there was a lot more of those $10,000 transfers last year. Yeah, I could have just read I went wrong. back and looked. These are the only ones that have been in there for very a while. Good. So. Very good. 
Okay, so on page six of your questions, do you want to go through and to, or are you pretty comfortable in going back and forth and we can move on to something else? I mean, I can explain them, but I don't know if you want me to point them out in the five-year cost comparison. Be happy to do so. I'm just. What were these questions on page so this six? So this is, what are some of the others that are non-descriptive? What do they entail? So if we go to page six of your questions. Oh, the word other. The word other. So we have other compensation. Um, there's a placeholder of $2,000 for summer intern clerks for human resources and, eight, and finance, which would pay two interns for 20 hours a week times four weeks during the summer. Um, some of the other compensations are when we have employees that leave and they're entitled to their leave payout. This is one area that we do not budget. We normally pay this out of whatever salary lapse we may encounter throughout a year, but we do not have, probably should, but we do not have a budgeted line item for leave payouts for when our 12-month employees leave the system and we have to pay them for their vacation. Mm -hmm. Where's the sick pay, sick pay allocated on here? Some of that is in the fixed charges, but if it's sick pay, we don't pay that out unless um, they transfer it if they're going to different school systems. So we don't pay that out when they leave, only annually, which is really I, I a 12 month. That, but at, for There's a small piece because when you retire every 20, if you retire from us, every 22 months of sick leave, you have gained you an extra month of Maryland State Retirement Credit. So if, if our leave falls off of a reciprocal of 22, so 22, 44, let's say you ended up with 55. So we would report 44 to Maryland State Retirement. You'll get two extra months of retirement credit, and then we will pay you the additional 11 days. I'm only asking, like on my P&L, I have a line that says sick leaves because <coughs> I need to know what that number is should everyone decide to collect it. So why don't we reflect that in our numbers, just like we have to do with the teacher pension? Or it's not required. It's not required. Well, it's let just me nice to know that number. Well, it's in our financial, I mean, we do it in a in the compensated absences as part of our financial statements, but okay. as far as a budgeted item, as far as wrong, this, we I'm don't asking it the wrong budget I'm for sorry. that. I was yep. just wondering. Yeah, we do, it, we do it as part of the financial statements, what that obligation is at the end of the year. Okay. But as far as a budgeted item, as far as what we pay out, we, Bob Peter to pay Paul to make sure that we have we funds to do we that. We don't book it. We don't book it. Yeah, we don't budget for it. Correct. But you know what that number is if off the top, I mean, you have it somewhere. In our financial statements, yes. Okay. Yes. But... As you know, that vacillates from year to year oh, yeah. based on who's oh, going to yeah. retire oh, and oh, yeah. all that other stuff. Um, just going down page six, I'm not going to necessarily reference back and forth to the five-year comparison because I think it's pretty intuitive. So under the instructional category, uh, contracted services, other, um, that's our outsourced psychological services because we have a vacancy there, so we have to still provide the services. So since we don't have the FTE, we have to outsource with a, uh, a company for that particular thing. Um, under supplies and materials instruction other there was a $260 computer monitor probably should have just been charged to sensitive supplies or something like that um, we had a lot of conversation about the next group the 5990s which is ban athletics and then a miscellaneous so the, um, the $15,000 that is there is for band equipment it is not for band repairs I did a little bit of research I saw where we purchased some tubas and some other musical instruments uh, look like some music books and things like that so that's what that item pays for and again the athletics uh, both at Queen Anne's and Ken Island that's I don't want to use the term a revolving fund but basically if all we had to pay for was officials this would be the money that would do that but we get gate receipts money in which then buys uniforms we get gate receipts money in which then turn around and buys uh, helmets and other athletic supplies tennis balls baseballs uh, backstops so um, we will look into further uh, maybe come up with a better accounting of those dollars but um, that's what that $50,000 with, with that was that this band line basically funded eight schools for their band equipment which I can go if back and look to see what the same amount that's just a little over $1,800 per school for band yeah and the tuba and costs how many thousands of dollars yeah that's their that's band all they, classes yeah. plus mm. all their band ensembles but the schools also have MOI which I think Something. is and can be used for that as well but if you'd like I can delve a little bit further in to see what schools are accessing these funds okay. and see if it is for all schools or whether it's just it's mainly for the high schools or don't they but rent I'm, and don't some of the students rent their own I mean mm -hmm. the students rent or own some of their own but when you get to these specialty instruments like tubas baritone saxophones those are very high cost mm -hmm. And you only need one or two of them. Not everybody 
depending the on the one. size of your ensemble. Right. Okay. I do know for the fact that Mr. Pender pays for all the repairs of those band instruments <laughs> out of his budget. Um, you're not just tooting his horn. Yeah, you're not just tooting Except his Except for own the ones that are personal ones, not the personal ones. <laughs> not yet. Right. 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 Sorry, Craig. Flipping to page seven, uh, again, that same thing with leave payouts for the special education because we can only <coughs> pay special education people out of a special education category. That's what that number represents. Um, under transportation, other compensation, uh, wages for drivers, basically to drive our buses to the bus inspection. We have to pay them for their time, and that's what that's for. Um, and then some of these other things, it looks like just maybe we could classify our expenses a little bit better. Under operations, maintenance, um, there's some meetings and conferences for staff office supplies. Um, so it just ended up in an other category, and it should, probably should have been classified um, in the meetings and conference line that's there or the office supply line that was there. Um, so we'll do, make sure we do a better job of classifying those expenditures going forward, but they're minimal amounts anyway. Um, I think we sort of talked about this on the bottom of page seven, number five, what's the trend data. We're working on a six-month analysis and hope to get you something maybe by next week. Um, but when we went and looked at that, there were some uh, staff that had not reported any of their mileage and some uh, seemed to be at least a month behind. So we've asked um, staff to update that so that I can provide you with a little bit more accurate information uh, and then we can make the decision going forward there um, would it be worth finding out how the other counties are doing that whether they're doing it by mileage I mean the thing is I know sorry I know we used to do it by mileage and we did a study years ago and found that we were overpaying by using that formula okay. and that's when we went to the stipend formula I'm just questioning is that still the best thing for us if other counties have done a lot of this legwork and already done this process and found that the stipend is the way to go rather than the mileage, that would help us to determine if we only need a quarter or a half a year of a report to justify staying where we are. If it came in that it saved us $4,000 every single one, that's a lot of money. So, I mean, I just want the best. So, Anne Arundel, for our Prince dollar. George's, and Howard, I know for a fact do mileage reimbursements. Um, I can check with some of the shore counties. Okay. Um, part of it could be a, a, the, a change to the formula, could be a workload issue, like we had talked about the, the teacher reimbursements and all of the time and effort to process that $75 for all the teachers that asked for that reimbursement. That could have been part of the consideration as well. Now, not to confuse mileage reimbursement not for any employee that needs to have not a mileage all. reimbursement sheet filled out. Right. Mileage okay. reimbursement as opposed to a large stipend. Yep. Okay. Yep. And again, this is only in county travel. We still reimburse for right. out of county travel. Right. And yep. would continue to do that. We'll continue to do so at the IRS approved rate. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Um, page eight, number six, portable classrooms. Mr. Pender? Sure. Um, one of you at board members had asked about portable classrooms, and I basically gave you a listing of the 29, there's 29 portables. We own all of them. There is one portable that we have out back that is a men's and women's bathroom. So it's a total of 30. Um, last year we got rid of the last portable that was leased. Um, when you're looking at the cost of them, I just put on there, the cost to operate a portable is very minimum. Uh, minimal. It's, uh, you know, the electric, that's about it. We don't have any, you know, running water to most of them. We don't have any... Um, you know, heat, we don't have heating oil, propane, any of those types of utilities. Um, then we just kind of gave you the cost associated with what if we had to purchase one and if we had to set up a new um, modular classroom. Uh, the market a couple years ago was flooded with them. We were able to buy several um, at a low cost, which really was beneficial to us, um, which replaced most of the ones we were leasing. So, does anybody have any questions about that, or? Okay. Page nine, question number seven, how much do we pay in software license agreements? Uh, again, we pulled out license agreements um, from um, the budget and administration. Um, $8,000 is our budget for uh, board docs, as you use uh, just about every day, I imagine. Uh, in instruction under contracted services license agreements, a budget of $60,000 that pays for Discovery Ed, Ed Menem, Explore Learning, which is our Science Gizmos, Apex Learning, uh, and then our library media software. Um, under 
license agreements number 3560. This is where we pay for Microsoft for all of our computers, both in the classroom and staff use. PowerSchool, Blackboard, our school messenger system, school wires, websites, um, and then Agile Mind, which is our, what, uh, how many grades? All grades? It's a core, core uh, middle school and a few of our high schools. Mm -hmm. And that, of that 271, that's that's $100,000. 100000 It's just it's Agile Mind. our core math program. Mr. Poluski, what happened between 2017 and 2018? What? Wow. Wait, I gotta go back. Let's page see. Team, I'm yeah. telling, page four. I mean, we went from 319 that to oh. 271. So one of the things that when we reduced that, we uh, eliminated um, our universal screener. That was $100,000. Okay. And so there is a budget request you'll see when Mr. Pender um, on, I believe it was the blue sheet, we do have a request for $40,000 to increase our uh, licenses to bring the universal screener back. What the universal screener does that it allows us to catch students that might need an intervention and it allows us to progress monitoring, monitor them along the way so that schools can make in time, real time decisions on how, you know, little Greg is kind of moving and progressing through that year with some fidelity checks uh, to ensure is he on track, is he off track, does he need something different. So that is very much paired back uh, to what we had, but that was um, okay. last year when we were going through our, our, our budget and looking for areas to cut. That was okay. over $100,000. Good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then in special. Is it helpful? I mean, it's helpful. It, 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 it really is. And, and now that um, we didn't get into all the, the some of our requests, but there's new um, uh, Comar regulation around gifted and talented education that. Uh, Although we have gifted and talented, we have the right, we have uh, procedures in place, but as far as a gifted and talented curriculum, th this is an area that needs attention. Um, Universal Screener will help us in some of those cases, um, but it, very much. I mean, now we're only looking at where we had it in all of our elementary and all of our uh, grade levels in elementary and middle. Now to pair it back to only looking at key grade levels, like a grade three, a grade five, and a grade eight on those heavy transition areas where they're moving between grade levels is probably a good place to get this started again. The other side is we're only a year out from, from not having STAR, so a lot of the training that we've had, um, we don't see that that's necessarily, there's gonna have to be some training, uh, but not nearly if we were buying a new product. So there's some ad certainly some advantages. To <coughs> and all the schools would utilize this? Of our elementary and middle and those, and those cre uh, grades, correct. Currently, Graysonville Elementary School had some leftover uh, Title I money, and they're the only school in the district right now <coughs> that has uh, that universal screener. Um, I, I would highly recommend it. I mean, it, it allows us an opportunity to catch kids maybe that we wouldn't normally be catching. And we tie that all the way back to the last board meeting when the superintendent's monitoring visit and the curriculum management and how do we you know close achievement gaps this is a tool that helps us <coughs> identify where that gap is and how do we get that individual the assistance they need at, at the time that they need it so we had it we dropped it so <coughs> we'd like to get it back in a in a much paired back now, is that reflected in this request in the dollar amount it in the blue is, sheet it's in the blue sheet Okay, so it's not it's not on this five-year comparison sheet, but it's on the blue sheet. Yeah, if you go to the blue sheet. This is in the FY19. Yes, I, I, yeah. I'm looking at yeah. here <coughs> with their budgeting, and, and yeah. I don't see okay. and, what that's reflected. Yep, yeah, if you go to the blue sheet, there's the second box, which is FY20 non-school-based, non-position cost summary. And then Life, okay. yep, <coughs> almost all the way down next to the bottom in that middle section says license agreement, universal screener, 40,000, yes. three grade levels, 1,500 students. So we would add this on top of this? Yes, that is correct. Because uh, mm -hmm. okay. just, just to reset a little bit, this is our current year budget and five years of history. Nothing one here includes For any 20, of our 20, 20. asks. That's we, confusing me because I'm used to seeing the ask and seeing how much that has changed from the five-year trend year and from last year's actual. Th this is confusing me, well, not having might, that 
that might ask. be something we'll put out after we've bought uh, something. Yeah, I thought I, budget. Yeah. I apologize for that. I thought that, you know we well, would, know we would move through, and change, as we crafted uh, this, right. then those end results would give you, Miss Harlow, exactly yeah, what it is that you're looking for. But it's confusing me not to have the ask because I might want to change the ask, but not remove it altogether. Maybe I want to adjust the ask for various reasons but not completely remove it. We don't have anything there to even give us a guideline as to without going to the five-year trend and out to the actual and not knowing what part of this 5.25268 budget that ask is. I mean, all the things in that column for ask should be what's adding up to what we're taking to the commissioners I on think our that's request. The cheat sheet. Summary. I know, but it's just not the same. <laughs> okay. All right. But anyway, that's just maybe my But I tell you, it would be, it would, uh, in support of what she's saying, it would be a good column to have when the superintendent presents her budget, and that way we can look at that if we want to start bringing stuff down. We'll have that right next to us to work on. I think we're we, in the development of the superintendent's budget now. So if well, they could, yeah, we <coughs> need to be doing that now, and without the ask filled in, well, we don't, I'm not so always we, clear. Let me what let me we're just, to if I can take a minute, moment just to go through process. So just so I can get understand, because I want to give you the information you want. So if on your five year, there was a current budget of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You're right. This blue sheet. Let's say we're going to ask for ten thousand dollars to that line. Seeing that 160000 on that five-year comparison sheet, you're going to see an increase of $10,000. Is the idea that you would cut that out completely, you might cut it down to 130, you might cut it down to nothing? Because the, the process behind here was, use this as our base budget, these are all the asks above it. And when if we, we get really that wanted number, to get into some base in. cuts, you point. have the information to come in base cuts yeah. and you can go and look, okay, your five-year average is $1,000, why are you budgeting $250,000. That would be what I would say this document would be used for from a base cut. But if you don't agree that what the the team has asking for so far in the number of positions and whatever, that's what you have these documents for and make the requisite cuts here, which then when those decisions were finalized would then become your FY20 request where you would see the difference between 19 and 20. Well, and I'll tell you the other reason it was very advantageous to have the ask, then we had um, that updated when we made changes to it. So we got our second budget book, and now that had the new numbers in it. Oh, it will. And we were able to see what the original number ask was, and reminding ourselves we cut that particular item $45,000 or whatever it was. Okay. I, this is just kind of throwing me off when I've, been accustomed to having what we are asking in this 5.2 million dollars for this particular section um, okay I mean well I'll make a point when we get to it as kind of an example of where that would change like like we may not remove a whole request mm -hmm. only part of it mm -hmm. so that number let's say it was a hundred and we removed part of it and dropped it to 75. We know we've saved $25,000 on that line. Because mm -hmm. our goal is going to be to, I think, have a bottom line we're all comfortable with moving forward. I'd like to see exactly where we acquired that differential. How did we get it from 5.2 to 3.1, if that's the and, way we and are? And just for clarification, you. using this sheet wouldn't With get that. you there That in the fact that you know that we're asking for $141,000 for school-based materials instruction. If you're only comfortable with $50,000. That's too broad of a range for me, I think. That's kind of my point. It's, all, it's a little all over the place. It, it kind of is. Okay. I mean, I know this is much more detailed and much more line by line. And I know we don't save millions of dollars taking 10 here and 20 there, but we save millions of dollars taking 50 here and 40 there. I mean, we did reduce our budget from the original 5.7 last year down to 3.2. And then what was added back was the last step, which brought it back up to around the $5 million range. But we could go in our book and see what the original request was, what we reduced it to, knowing how we got that down to $3.2 million. That was our, our Bible. Okay. 
how did we get down to this point? Oh, well, we saved in new hires. We saved in whatever other category we reduced. You see, I, I misunderstood as well. I thought that what you have here as the add-ons was already added in here. No, because that's only, that's and again, I'm, okay, so I apologize I mean, if, if you were presented something different last year. I kind of did, I too. Didn't, that's my That's my. It bad. didn't that's click with I'm, me. Yeah, this is more this of a going, okay. current and backwards. Okay. And then let's take, now let's talk about what we want to do in addition to what we're currently doing, and that's your green and your blue sheets, all summarized by your Apple sheet. Oh. But, okay. um I apologize if it's confusing. I, I thought it was actually making it simpler, but. No, you've done some wonderful things here that we've never had the advantage yeah, of. Don't no, you agree? This is, oh, this yeah. is fabulous. This, this is so really, really good. Total descriptions. I'm oh just a little confused by not seeing my this, ask this number here, for though, each if, thing. If, this is the, on this you have the current budget. Uh huh. The current actual or current budget. The or current budget, budget as it is now, or the current, so current amount budgeted for this particular line. Year. So, and these are the only changes to the, changes the whole to be made. thing here. Yep. Okay. That's why I was just thought it was a little bit simpler to work from this. As I don't agree with the, the data wise consultant. I don't agree with increasing bus contracts. I don't agree with including health insurance. And we would then cross these off, and then your ask comes down appropriately, as opposed to okay. going through as opposed this to having document. it and then having to change okay. it and reprint but it. However, we want to do it, I'll be happy to give you whatever I get you need. That part, but no, that makes it a lot more clear. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Let's I don't mean take to be about obtuse. a five-minute break just, real quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then that uh, continues. Yep. I'm take a break. So I think that wrapped up all of our questions. Um, and we've gone through the presentation, kind of like summarizing to see where we want to go from here. So we've, we've done the questions. We've handed out the additional documents. It kind of gives you a snapshot of the school requests, the non-school requests, uh, what we're looking for as, a, as an ask, as we are right now, of the county and, and other, uh, the state, based on that funding, um, answered their questions. So I know we have a little bit of time remaining. Do we have additional questions? Um, further clarification of what we presented this evening? Um, floor is yours. It's here. What page? Sorry. Okay. So we actually, for the ideas of what we want to do, we have uh, like 10 minutes. I know you probably have, you may have questions based on what you studied from the last meeting. I had um, sure. quite a few, but some of it has been answered already in this okay. whole update here, which, which was great, including okay. I had questions on the questions that we had answered last time. I was like, oh, he did that one. So my question, what we're looking at is we need to go through this. The, the process is we, we go thoroughly through so we understand what we're asking for. We think and look at ways we may be able to cut back on them because the, the commissioners um, are ready to help us, but if we hand them something that's so unrealistic, they just go right back to straight back to MOE. And I think we have an opportunity this year to get some additional funds over MOE. Um, they're funding uh, t with, through Parks and Rec two turf fields at the high schools, which we're delighted to have. It's not in our budget, but um, there are many other things that the public has said in the past that they'd rather have make the school system whole before they do turf fields. So we'd like to support what the county wants to do, but we also want to get our, our our system right back whole where, where, where we think it should be. And we're having those conversations with the commissioners. Um, but I wanted to, we want to go in with a bottom line as a realistic request. This is great, and maybe this is the realistic request. I'm not totally sure because a lot of new information we received today. But there are step-by-step -step questions that you all may have on some of these things, which gives us the opportunity to maybe pare some of these, these things down if we need to, to, to make that realistic request. So that's kind of where we are right now. I'm not sure how much you, how many questions you guys have come up with, additional concerns. Um, there's a lot of data to absorb after tonight. So I'm not, I'm inclined to hold that next meeting next week to be Absolutely. sure where, where we want to be, so. And, and Captain Kelly, if I can add, um, certainly we've got time and certainly we'll be here as long as necessary to answer your questions. But um, 
it might be beneficial that if you do have questions, board members, based on last week's presentation, you hadn't had a chance to get to us, and then also what you saw tonight, if you can get them to me, you know, by you know Friday or you know even Monday at the latest, uh, we can certainly put together another packet very similar to this. We'd add to it so that we can have those questions, and because we really don't have a presentation to do, I don't anticipate too many updates to any of the documents, so we really can spend some time doing your question and answer during the next board session to try to come up with a product that uh, superintendent and you would be um, would love to present to uh, the county commissioners well if I might suggest a question and answer you guys have been great you've been great if you didn't have the question the answer to our question last week you brought it to us this week um, but I think at some point we have to sit down and kind of break this apart like like the first thing I think we have to do is discuss the number of new hires that are on this list um, one million two hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars and it doesn't include three positions and I do not like ever messing around with positions that directly impact our students um, whether we have them already and it's a current position or something that we are hoping to be able to fill but I think 21 new hires is unrealistic to present as a final budget request so I think we should discuss that as a as a topic and then any other sections that people have questions about um, discuss it I mean we're jumping an awful lot here in the auto allowance under administration we're jumping um, we are jumping six thousand dollars and I thought I was gonna have an answer as to why that was but maybe I didn't ask that question last you may have week. missed it but I'll, I'll have an answer for you Absolutely. I mean and we're actually jumping um, 10,000 over our five-year standard why if it is someone's contract we need to check that contract and see if that allows and where did you get the 10,000 that that's it's not, right here on line um, auto page, allowance 1370 page, on page one of your five-year comparison right 1370 auto allowance five-year average is 8,343 last year we spent 12,479 we're asking for 18,000 that's what we have for this year 2019 oh that 2019 is, is 18, See, this is where I'm getting year. confused on not having our ask <coughs> for two years that last column has been our ask number okay on okay. the five-year cost comparison chart yeah. is that what yeah you're... we always had the last column was what we were asking and and we had an increase uh we had a dollar amount we were requesting for the budget and ha the last column i think showed what the actual increase was over last year's Ms. Harlan, amount can i cl clarify that mm -hmm. was it at this particular stage of the game or was it more along the yeah, lines when you were doing always. the reconciliation in june that you would have of course had your budget document no and, and it this. was in our scenarios too it would always be in our scenarios okay. too but the scenarios were the rec is, reconciliation mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. that was but, the reconciliation yeah but th that's wh that's why i'm getting confused there is no ask number here um okay okay so in that, that Mr. Fister, just to just to give an example, in the auto allowance 1370, there's there's no request in addition to. No, there's not. Right? There's not. No. That's why we go back the, to this sheet. Because the because yes, the request is not on your blue or your green. Yeah. So there's no request it's, it's, to it, increase that. So but to your point, my question should have been last year. <laughs> it should have been last year. Yeah. Uh, well, but that? to your point, certainly, why was there an increase? I'll certainly answer that. For you. Um, I guess that's because I went through a lot of them. I saw some. Cha major changes too that I'm not sure we went through one at a time last year mm, okay but what I do understand is clarify this blue sheet is only the increases if something is not on here it is staying the same yes absolutely okay. 100 percent that is would you have showed us any that are reduced um we have not done any systemic reductions um in the request we could certainly look at some things as as Ms. Harlow just pointed out if we feel that the eighteen thousand uh, dollars really should be at eight we could certainly include that in our pare down request to I would offset think some of the glaring ask. some of the glaring ones 
you know, would be I'm useful coming up with 20,000 here and there all over the board, so. Yeah. Well, you know, 20,000 times five is $100,000, so that's two salaries starting out. Yeah, I'm, two, I'm, I'm two coming positions. up with quite So, a few I mean, I'm okay with that, Tammy. Okay. You know, I mean, I know Mr. Fister feels strongly and most uh, every financial expert you will sit down with will say, you're not going to make a lot of impact on a $2 million budget, saving 10 here and 10 there. But when we save hundreds sure. of thousands page sure. to page, that's how we got down $2 million last year. Sure. Um, so I'm still confused on this sheet. Where do we have the 1299000 for the 18 and a half new hires? Where is that on So here? if you look at your first column that says learning accountability and results. Yes. You take your staffing current over hires, that blue box. Yes. And add it to the blue box below it for regular staffing, 1088. You add those two up and you get 1299. However, the reason it's broken out that way uh -huh. is again we've we've we, we keep using the term underwater out of you know above our heads or get above ground or whatever the way this is structured is m that first group is mandatory costs mm -hmm. we feel that the three positions that are current over hires are mandatory to keep us going the way we are the cost of doing business oh, is were the over hires not on this little chart they, um, they yeah. are they are in this they are in your green sheet that are the that big is squares the smaller of that yes so but those so those three positions we pulled out because we feel that those are mandatory we have to have those positions to maintain what we are hires. currently doing right. okay cost of doing so business so that reduced the 1299 bottom line down to 1088 okay so that's why here it's 1.614 because we adjusted it for those three overhires and that's why it includes I'm not those seeing, three okay. overhires yes. okay <coughs> okay and none of that is inclusive of the PIO department changes and the three positions that we're adding one from the PIO. So the PIO the change is over in column three under or operational effectiveness, your second block. Okay. That's where that position and well, the dollars that, associated with that. That's kind of where I have a problem. Look at, you've got 148939 but in this booklet, when you describe that um, reorganization, you have 148 whatever as the total amount. But that includes the changes to the two current positions as well. At least that's the way it was presented last year. So basically, I'm asking, what part of that dollar amount is the actual salary for the director and what part of it is the increase? Last year, there was a $13,000 increase request for one of the positions to go from 48,000 to 63. There was a $110,000 request for the director position that was being requested. I have a document already prepared for you I would so like to I share with you. So I need that 148 okay. broken down and- Will do. And, and. <sighs> They're asking for a communications officer and then a director of the media. So you have three positions. Two positions that and would that, have a director. And, and to have already. a director. Yeah, you have two already. I have two already. Right. But this was my complaint last year. I cannot sit here and justify a director position for a department of two people at the cost of $110,000 a year. I have a hard time justifying that. This also includes a total reorganization. That is renaming and redescribing job duties for the two positions we currently have. I always get a red flag in front of me when I see the word reorganization because sometimes that requires people to reapply for the position that they're in. So I worry about that. If it's just going to be the same position and the same title and the same job duties, nothing would change except whatever it's, they got in their increment for their st I know yeah. I know and I would read this um, for one thing the part the part that is additional to what is being done now is the partnerships with that we don't have anything that does that department shifts and the other part is the 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 way to bring money into the school system the two oh, positions we have that's right. the director the other two positions are being rewritten too and retitled as well.
Okay, and that I don't know. And that All I'm is, is this position, that I need to know yeah. what. So we have a communication specialist, and it runs about yeah. forty three, forty eight thousand dollars. You have a job. I need to know what the do, what the dollar amount for this position will now be after this reorganization, because last year it was a thirteen thousand dollar increase mm -hmm. that was being requested. So the one forty eight is inclusive of okay. the new director position. Any change to the other two positions, be it through their regular salary increase or step and salary mm -hmm. increase, whatever we approve, and is there a raise for the one position? Both positions are being retitled. Yeah, and we don't know all that, and that's something we need to hear. Yes, from the, uh, so yes. We intend yes. With Ladies the and gentlemen, we, we are at the 8 o'clock hour, so, yeah. um, so I, I highly recommend that we have next year's meeting next I mean next, next, next week. week's <laughs> meeting oh, we'll have a meeting next oh, year oh you'll be here next year too next year. <laughs> no we can continue. hopefully we won't be discussing the 20 budget next year but <laughs> but I think uh, in, in support of what you say we do need the superintendent here to explain the the reorganization justification of it and, and, the just, and, and what what that means like you're asking and wow. what additional stuff is happening um you know I, the, I want the us foundation to be cautious thing I'm very excited about, about because the foundation is supposed to bring money in. Yes. That's the point. But I want money us to, to be cautious system. about what some people's job oh. duties actually are and are they being pushed into this position and they've already been a part of another position. And that, right. And that's what should be explained, the whole reorganization. And I would well, just recommend, partnerships I would just recommend in, job. in between now and the next meeting to read through the job, job description so you would have positions. Okay. more of an idea on, well, on the Well, be honest, work. there are people that are doing all these, they have taken this under their wing since <coughs> we no longer have, I mean, we've had to reorganize and there are people doing these jobs and for no extra money. So um, to create... Well, we just God. lost Karen. Karen's only been gone a month. Yeah, no, but no, no there was other stuff. Yeah, there was other stuff that got shoveled. There's people doing this. I mean, you got you can see right. There's the teacher, teacher of the year, of the year is now being yeah, yeah, that is a great example. Yeah, that is yeah. in brand thing for someone to about do. three different departments right now. Yes. In fact, my yeah, assistant yeah. Betsy Andrews has now taken that on as the lead. But Betsy always worked on teacher of the year. Well, she, on she it, was but she wasn't the part lead. of it, but she wasn't the lead. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's a matter of fact, there's a piece that's in Mr. Fister's office as well. Yeah. So, and that's on top but of. But the lead was the communication specialist. Correct. Okay. So, we just lost the communication specialist. I know we had a gap where we didn't have one. Okay. We don't have one now. Well, okay. yeah. Okay. So, For a yeah. month, we haven't had one. She left yeah. the end of okay. November. Well, anyhow, we'll we'll do that. So, yeah, I agree that we'll read through the descriptions here. We'll get more yeah. information. And then you can the ask, yeah, you can so the questions look we at have. the board. Out of courtesy, I just want to tell you that I will not be at next week's meeting. So, is it all right that I, I'll send it to all of you, what I see in here, and then you can bring it up as you as sure. you send it to Mr. Fister. And send it to Mr. Fister. If, if, you, if you send it to me in print, then I'll, I'll have answers to your questions. Okay, yeah, because there, there's <coughs> quite a few things. And like Or if I it's said, a flat-out yeah, yeah, slice, then absolutely that would be yeah. the discussion for your so team. So if, if, okay. if that is all right with everyone, since I'm not going to be here, sure. I do apologize. Yeah. And, and let's do push our questions off to him if you can. And what you can do is send them to him. Um, you can copy us on them if you want. That way we don't send too many questions to him. And we can directly send them to him. However, we do not That's answer okay each other. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was just going to ask maybe. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We, yeah. Real, yeah. I'm sorry. Mr. Yeah. One quick. We do not answer each other as yeah, that would be in violation well, of Open Meetings Act. Right. You know what? You can send them to each of us right. individually we and we don't respond to a whole right. group. Right. right. We don't yes. respond. Okay. Yes. We, we don't a respond group. as we a, do group not to respond. a group. We do not respond. I just want to yeah. be clear. Just, yeah. Thank you. Just a suggestion. Maybe what we could have Mr. Fister do is create one Google document. Then that way you can see everybody's questions in, in one document verse sending him individual ones true. Yeah. that way everybody can kind of see and you we can may edit. have overlapping questions you might have overlapping right. questions right. Sure. Fine. great minds right. think alike right okay so yeah, yeah. we'll I'll and the only question i have so far as a takeaway from tonight was miss harlow's the eighteen thousand dollar why the increase on the 1370 mm -hmm. auto allowance well that's, that's really a last year question now, now that i'm that's reading the chart correctly that was the last year question i, mean, I had a comment about that if it if this could have been in the contract actual spending is right now in the current year do we need to be asking for that amount next year? Okay. The projection for the rest of the year is well, not going to use up I think some of these guidelines. Amount. We have to meet a contract. Yeah. We we meet meet oh, no, no, they wouldn't be. You're right. Yeah. So if yeah, there's yeah, projected yeah. cost, then okay. it doesn't look like we're going to spend out. 
Can we see that in this? And, and I'll try to get that for you by next week, we yes. That's, another hour because yeah. I have issues. You mean like where we are as of December 31st on these particular items or January 31st? And projecting for the rest of the school year, we probably will Project is probably going to be a little bit difficult because it will require some of these lines to go back in. And it's, it's not as simple as divide by six, multiply by 12 kind of thing. It would be, okay, well, we don't get this particular bill or this service until April or May. Okay. So that might take a little bit more time. And we'll, we'll be coming with a projection to the board you know in a, probably in, a, in about two months but I'll get what you can what I can for you to kind of that might chart that course chisel it down a bit when it comes to cutting mm -hmm. absolutely so, may, okay um, and I then the other that. the only yeah. other comment I want to make it as you're looking through your comparison just keep in mind that when you're looking for the okay the ten thousand dollars to slash make sure that, that the line right underneath of it could be We've underfunded it for ten thousand dollars over the last five years. So just keep right, that in right, in right. mind because, like I had mentioned last week, I kind of look at this as the as the grouping. That if I'm five thousand dollars over in subs, but I'm five thousand dollars short in tutors, and they're following the same line, that's no cut. That's no savings. That's no nothing. So just yeah. when you're going through looking at that, just keep that in the frame of your mind that some of those savings could be offsetting overages in other areas right. and the virtual academy wasn't added into these new numbers anyway right Come here. Okay. okay um just want to clarify january 30th we will have our meeting school board work session and that's a night meeting five to eight february 6th is a school regular school board meeting the business meeting superintendent will present her budget that's the normal time at 4 30 um, and then six o'clock for the open session 13th is a school board budget work session, <laughs> five to eight, and the 20th is a school board work session, um, and that is the normal third Wednesday, which will be at 11 to two. March 6th is the next school board meeting for March, and um, the board's requested budget, we will finalize our budget then. And um, then we have the normal 20th of March, third, third Wednesday to be the work session. Um, and that is 11, right? Those are 11 and done until we change that. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. second. The motion and a second to adjourn the meeting, Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond when I call your name. Captain Kelly? Aye. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. And before we close, I just want to thank the staff very much. This is awesome, awesome work, a lot of work. It and is a lot of work. And it's really complete, you know, makes it much clearer of what we're trying to Correct. do. That's what our intent is. Okay. Appreciate meeting. it. Thank yep. you. The Absolutely. meeting is adjourned. Thank you.